Hi and welcome to Simply Scuba. This video is all about masks and will run through the different types, styles, options and technologies that you might come across when choosing a mask and will also help you choose the mask that is right for you. A mask is needed in order to create an airspace in front of your eyes so that they can focus as they have not developed through evolution to focus underwater. Unlike swimming goggles, the nose is incorporated into the airspace of a mask to allow scuba divers and freedivers to equalise both the volume of the mask and also their ears as their volume is compressed by the pressure of the water above them. The basic construction of a mask is a tempered glass lens in front of the eye, a silicone skirt to create a seal against the face, a strap to keep the mask secured to the face and a frame to structure to fix those components together. Each of those components can vary in depth greatly and each manufacturer will have their own take on what is the best way to do things. Technically speaking, there is no difference between a snorkelling mask and a scuba diving mask. One can be used for both activities. There are some key things to look out for in a mask, including internal volume and lens angle. The internal volume or profile of the mask is important to scuba divers and freedivers, but less so for snorkelers. The volume is the confined airspace created when the mask is sealed against the face. This space is subject to compression as a diver descends, which has to be equalised to prevent discomfort. A very low internal volume is crucial for breath holding freedivers, as the air required to equalise must come from the air held in their lungs. So wasting air on unnecessary equalisation reduces the breath hold time. Generally speaking, most people find that a lower volume mask is the most comfortable. It's not always noticed, but the lenses and frame of a lot of modern masks don't run at the same angle as the face and are raked in at the bottom. To a lesser extent, this helps to reduce the internal volume, but more importantly, it improves the lower field of view. By raking the angle, the frame is moved back in towards the cheekbones and out of visible range. Not only does it make looking downwards easier, but it benefits snorkelers by preventing the need to tilt the head forward to see below them. Tilting the head too far forward will often lead to the snorkel dipping into the water and giving you a mouthful of water. Each component of a mask will have a more advanced feature that enhances it to become lighter, softer, improve field of view or increase clarity. So let's run through each of the components to look at the features in greater detail. Let's start by taking a look at the lenses. Lens configuration and specification present the biggest decision to make. Masks have either a single, twin or multiple lens configuration, but the glass specification, lens shape and special coatings are all possible options. Single lens masks have no frame construction across the bridge of the nose and can seem much more open, but it is not possible to get replacement prescription corrective lenses. Twin lens masks are often compatible with replacement prescription lenses that are made by the manufacturer. These are easily fitted following removal of part of the frame. Multiple lens masks feature a window plane to either side of the mask that help to make the mask feel more open and brighter, but do little to increase the field of view as the front lenses generally provide ample peripheral vision. The lens of a mask should be made from a tempered glass or a high grade lightweight plastic. Standard glass shatters into tiny razor sharp shards that would obviously damage the eyes if they were to get into them. Temper glass, on the other hand, is a type of safety glass that has been heated or chemically treated to increase its strength. When temper glass is shattered, it crumbles into larger granular chunks rather than jagged shards. Standard tempered glass lenses have a number of impurities, including iron, that gives the glass a green tinge when viewed from the side. These impurities can actually hinder light transmittance into the mask by reflecting or scattering light rays as they pass through the glass but it isn't that noticeable until compared to an optical grade lens. The glass used in a high grade lens has a very low impurity value, which allows more light in and also increases the vibrancy of colors. The shape of the lens is also important. Most manufacturers have adopted a reverse drop shape. Now, if you imagine a water droplet running down a window, it has a curved bottom and a tip at the point. Rotate that 180 degrees, now look at the majority of masks available and you'll see that shape in the lens. This particular shape works well when used with a rate frame to offer excellent field of view to both the side, lower sectors and make the frame itself seem almost invisible. Some masks feature specifically coated lenses. 
The lenses are typically already made from a high-grade optical glass to reduce the light reflected or scattered by impurities, but the additional coatings work to further reduce the amount of light that is reflected back out by the surfaces of the lens themselves. The mask skirt should always be made from a high-grade silicone for the best level of comfort and superior sealing. Silita or other plastic-based skirts are not as flexible, are prone to warping and are much less comfortable to use. The role of the skirt is simple but critical, to provide a good seal to keep the air in and water out. The one feature that can be found on all good mask skirts is a secondary skirt. The secondary skirt increases the surface that is able to seal against the skin and significantly reduces the possibility of a leak. As manufacturing techniques improve, silicone skirts are becoming more advanced with varying thicknesses, designs, special ridge and dimpled areas to improve fit, comfort seal and integrity. Additives mixed with the silicone are also becoming common to prolong the life of the skirt and reduce damaging effects of UV rays. Masks come in one of two formats, framed and frameless. Frame masks use a rigid frame which the skirt, lenses, buckles and strap are all fitted to. Generally, framed masks are slightly bigger in overall dimensions, but the advantage is that these masks can typically be dismantled for cleaning, repair, replacement, or to fit prescription lenses. Frame masks are also available in a wide range of colors. In a frameless mask, the silicone skirt is molded around the other components to join them all together. This produces a very slimline mask that can be folded very flat, making them ideal as backup masks that can be easily stowed in a pocket. Because the lenses are embedded with the silicone skirt, it is not possible to replace them if they break and prescription lenses cannot be fitted. A silicone strap secures the mask to the head and maintains contact between the skirt and the skin. Using silicone provides a degree of stretch and flexibility that doesn't hinder movement or affect the integrity of the skirt seal. As everyone is different, the strap needs to be adjustable so that it can be tightened or loosened using a buckle system. A simple buckle system is fixed to the frame of the mask and has a spring-loaded flap that grips between the tabs of the strap to allow free tightening, but also prevent loosening without lifting the flap. These buckles are rigid and do not allow the buckle to swivel or flex with movement. More advanced buckles can feature easier to use push buttons to operate the strap rather than have to fiddle with the release flap. Swivel assemblies are common and as a minimum provide vertical movement. In recent years, manufacturers have often moved the buckle attachment point of the frame itself and incorporated it further back on the skirt. Doing this reduces the stress, transfers through the side of the skirt, increases the freedom of movement and also helps the skirt seal better. A mask is a very personal thing. A mask that fits one person may be uncomfortable on another, so it is important to find the perfect one for you and not necessarily one that is recommended by a friend. It is possible to check for a good fit before using it in the water by holding the mask to your face and breathing in through your nose without the mask strap fitted. If the mask stays in place, then it fits. If not, or if you feel the air flowing into the mask as you breathe, then try another one for fit. If you buy a mask from us, we will send you full instructions on how to perform this test when we dispatch your order. If you do have facial hair, you can use petroleum jelly or a similar product to help the mask to seal to your face where it comes into contact with the skin. So now that you have all the knowledge needed to find the perfect mask for you, take a look at our range of high quality masks at simplyscuba.com.